The significance of the unique representation theorem might not be immediately obvious. In this video, let's try to dig deeper into what makes it so powerful. If a vector space has a finite basis, then the unique representation theorem says that any vector in the vector space can be uniquely stored as a finite list of numbers. For example, Let's look at the vector space of continuous functions, and then let's look at a subspace of this bigger vector space. Let's look at the span of x squared the exponential function, the sine of x, and the cosine of x. It might not be totally obvious, but I'm going to say, and we can believe that this is true, that this set is linearly independent. So since this is linearly independent, and it's certainly a spanning set, this vector space has a finite basis. And a function is in this subspace if and only if that function is a linear combination of these basis vectors. So far, this is just the definition of a spanning set. But what the unique representation theorem tells us is that any function can be only represented in one way. What does that get us? Well, you look at this and your first instinct might be that these are extremely complex complicated objects. Like if I asked you to graph 2x squared plus 1 half e to the x plus 5 sine of x minus 2 the cosine of x, you would probably not be able to do that mentally. You'd probably have to use a calculator or Desmos or something like that. So in a sense, this is a very complicated object. In another sense, thanks to the unique representation theorem, this function x can be a unique stored as a list of four numbers, c sub one, c sub two, 
C sub three, C sub four. So the unique representation theorem lets us store extremely complicated looking objects in an extremely simple way. And thinking back to section 1.3, if we have a list of four real numbers, we could think of that as a vector in R4. So let's go back to this statement and modify it slightly. If a vector space has a finite basis, then any vector in the space can be stored as a vector in Rn. Thus, although at first blush, this vector space might seem much more complicated than R4, it isn't really, because the vectors in this space can be stored as lists of four numbers, which you can then think of as being vectors in R4.